So good afternoon everyone. Um, I'm here to talk about features offered by WSO2 platform for application development. Okay, so applications are built with a purpose, and if the purpose of applications are not met, they won't be used. They will be phased out very soon. So I'm going to walk you through an example and show what features we can use to build this, that type of an application, but it can be applied in general as well. So Randy is a owner of a software startup, and Quick Street Distro is a distribution company for perishables. So if you are a baker, you can bake without worrying about uh, distributing it. Quick Distro will take care of it. Right? So Quick Distro wants a distribution management system for their business. They want invariably, uh, they want inventory along with it too. They have an ERP system that they have been using so far for the thing for the same purpose but the problem is they are in the business of distributing perishables so they want a system that updates the stocks instantly so th him they contact Randy and they start on a joint venture to create a system that uh, would do distribution management in a real-time manner right so these are the requirements of the application. They need to update the stocks instantly at the point of receiving as well as at the point of distributing them to consumers. So they want to provide an API to producers to uh, instantly get updates on their stock availability. They can use it in their uh, application or they can develop a mobile application themselves to query the stock uh, uh, amount in quick distro. They want to integrate with the existing ERP system. So those are the main functional requirements. And the non-functional requirements are, the system must be highly available, secure and scalable, obviously, and performing. And they need to be patch, able to patch and upgrade and scale modules separately. What they have in mind is uh, they might sell this to another same type of a vendor, or eventually they might host a cloud system out of it. So they want to build the best possible scalable solution using uh, current available technologies. So Randy comes up with a system. So this is his system. He designs the system as a, as a set of services, a distributed system. It has APIs. These API, APIs will be consumed by the portal inside employees and as well as the producer websites or producer apps. And there is a system, there is a ESP that will do integration between the ERP and the new system. Obviously, this is an enterprise application. It needs to plug into an enterprise LDAP. That's for enterprise security. And there are a set of mobile devices, handheld devices, given to employees to update stock instantly. And there's an application running controlling these mobile devices. So um, as we know, some of the large system providers fail because they cannot control their handheld devices. That's the best example in Sri Lanka. So you might know. So they fail because they could not control the handheld devices. The end users upgrade the OS, install unwanted apps, uninstall application, and the connectivity between the system and the handheld devices break. So um, Randy knew you need a way to control that. So let's look at uh, the design decisions behind Randy's uh, uh, system. So Randy design the system as a set of services, as a distributed set of services. Uh, a distributed system is when components run on their separate processors communicating by passing messages. So this is a distributed system, and it will inherit all the good things about a distributed system, which includes uh, it can scale independently. There are independent failures. 
there are, con there, there, there are no locking, there's high level of concurrency, and you can control changes independently, right? Then, of course, APIs. Any system designed today needs APIs. Without APIs, what happens? Data is going to be in a silo. So let me say what an API is. API is a consistent programmatic way to access data. If your system is not going to have APIs, the data is going to be inside the system. And today, businesses know that one of their most valuable assets is data. So if you decide to keep it in your system, good luck for success. You won't be able to do with it. So, Randy's system has APIs, so the data is no longer in silos, which means it promotes integration, it promotes business process automation, and it promotes app development around the system. Different people might come up with different applications for this system. And additionally, it promotes uh, business functionality reuse, partnerships, and monetization. Right? So he decides to use Auth for protecting these APIs because it's the most popular standards for exposing industry gates APIs. So in this situation, he'll be using two types of uh, auth, uh, auth grant types. One is to access data as a trusted client. This is for producer websites, and the other is to uh, access data as a trusted application on behalf of the user. So if an employee is issuing uh, goods out of his system, so we know like Jagat issued 20 cupcakes in Kurunagala, like that. So um, that's, so because of that, we need to know the user who used the end application, who, who made the API call. Because of OAuth, same set of APIs can be consumed by handheld devices the portal, the in-house portal, and the third-party applications with different levels of authorizations. So let's take the device manager. So device manager supports device tracking and monitoring. We need the, there are, when it comes to the handheld devices, there are two modes. One is BYOD, bring your own device. The other one is COP, corporate owned but personally enabled. For this scenario, we want uh, a device manager that supports COPE. So, the most important functionality of this device manager would be to control the app management. So we don't want, we want to prevent unnecessary upgrades and installations going into the mobile device, and we want to push the necessary upgrades, installations, and deletion to the mobile device. So the mobile device, should be completely under the control of the system while giving some freedom to the end user to make some decisions. And security purposes. If the mobile device is lost, we need to be able to track it. We need to be able, to, if we cannot uh, obtain it back, we should be deleting it or locking it. So all of this functionality is expected by a device manager. So uh, the next thing, next important decision was integration with ERP. That was not a choice. He had to do it because the heart of the quick distro organization depended on ERP system. Without connecting to it, there will be two systems. There will be manual data transformation back and forth between these systems, which is going to be a real cumbersome, error-prone process, right? So. Um, he knew he needed an ESP solution. So he knew about WSO2 as an integration company, right? So he, had, uh, he was thinking about using ESP for this. So in addition, he needed to update employee performance in the ERP system. ERP system was uh, responsible for everything else, right? HR, HR, human resource management, accounting update. So he wanted to update accounts instant, instantly in the ERP system, enrich uh, employee performance data, as well as uh, take some data out of it for the distribution management system. For example, we know employee 31 is holding the device number 72, 
we want to know who the employee number 31 is. So Randy visits WSO to con, right? So he hears about microservices for Java framework. So I'm not going to talk about it because the next talk is going to be on this. Uh, it's, he decides to use it for the service implementations. So I'm going to skip these two slides, three slides. So his decision, he decides to use microservices framework for his services. Then for the portal that is built for in-house users, he decides to use WSO2 application server. WSO2 application server is based on Tomcat, CXF, and access to existing industry standards, but it gives industry software, open source software, but it gives you additional rich set of APIs. For example, some, you cannot switch on SSO instantly on Tomcat. You don't have APIs to store user profile data in Tomcat. Uh, so these type of APIs are available on App Server. And additionally, it's cloud-enabled and highly scalable. So elastically scalable. So because of this, he, uh, you can do all those, but with some extra effort. It is out of the box available in App Server. So he decided to use App Server for hosting the web portal. So this is how the new architecture looks. There's, um, there's microservices framework for Java hosting the services, and there's the portal. Okay, so then he uh, comes across WSO2 Enterprise, e Enterprise Mobility Manager, which perfectly fits his requirements of managing devices in the co-op mode, where the enterprise manager as the device. At the moment the device is en enrolled into the system, there are a set of policies managing the security, data, and the features of the handheld device, right? So he uses Enterprise Mobility Manager for that, and of course, application management. Push necessary upgrades, prevent unnecessary upgrades, installations, and deletions. And security also, they are in Enterprise Mobility Manager. So Enterprise Mobility Manager comes into the picture. He didn't have to do a single thing, just a set of configurations his handheld devices are secured. So WSO2 ESP, this is the main reason why he came for uh, the conference, but he learned everything else in the process. So if your application needs some integration needs, so today applications are no longer silos, right? There are data going back and forth. You can use ESB to do the transformations. It does mediation, transformations, and routing between transports, data formats, and cloud adapters. So basically, it connects anything to anything. So to connect the ERP system and enterprise uh, and the distribution management system, he uses WSO2 ESP. Imagine the ERP works on uh, JMS queues, and we work on HTTP. No problem. WSO2 ESP will be able to map messages between different transports. Right? So let's take I'm the identity server. Identity server manages security in a uh, enterprise, uh, in, a, in a generic situation, but in this, in this case, WSO2 identity server is used for managing security in the whole system. So it supports many standards, OpenID Connect, SAML2, Scheme, and entitlement, when it comes to entitlement, it supports uh, role-based role entitlement and SACML. So, but in this case, when he used WS2 Identity Server, he can plug into Enterprise LDAP and provide any of these authentication and authorization protocols to the user. For example, he can act as an IDP, providing SAML, SSO, uh, to the people who are logging into the web portal. So he decides to use identity server, an API manager. So we were talking about exposing the APIs, industry-grade APIs. Anybody can expose APIs using username password, but it's not very useful. You need OAuth to cater for different authorization scenarios, delegation scenarios. So API manager exposes REST, SOAP, JSON, XML services in OAuth uh, as OAuth APIs. 
And additionally, it will provide a store for all the producers to come and buy or buy or subscribe to APIs. Right now, they are not going to sell any APIs. Right? So in this case, producers, people who bake, who produce perishable items, can come into API store, look at the APIs, subscribe to APIs, and write applications and use it in their website to query the amount of uh, stock that is available. Or tell, OK, I need two uh, stacks delivered to central province tomorrow, likewise. So all of these things are happening via APIs. So if when you add identity server and API manager to the system, it will look like this, right? API manager and identity server. So developer studio, developer studio tooling, uh, when we write, when we implement uh, something, when we have a server, when we are putting out a server, we make sure that we write tooling for it because we know our main target audience is going to be a developer. They are going to write artifacts on our servers. So we make sure that we put out tooling along with it. So all the servers that I talked to you about, App Server, Microservices Framework for Java, um, ESP has tooling for it. So rather than you trying to write XML, if you use Developer Studio, you can drag and drop and create a ESB sequence. Or there are graphical editors when drag and drop is not available, not relevant. And there are templates. When you create a project, the structure is already there. You only have to worry about the logic. You can straight away start writing logic. And you can test within the IDE. Those are the advantages of using WSO2 Developer Studio. OK. So um, that's a slight mistake. <laughs> the, we, have extend, we have designed a comprehensive AL, ALM story for the platform. So we know that an application is, doesn't go to production straight away. First, it is being tested on developer laptops. Then it will be tested on a integra continuous integration environment. Then it will go to testing and production environments eventually. There will be several life cycles. It's not fixed. Different companies are going to have different life cycle stages. So we have, this, we have a well-defined application life cycle management story to be used by any uh, developers, any developer. So for example, if you externalize all the endpoints to a separate archive, you can move the WAR file from development to test into production without any change. You just have to change the archive that, is, that has endpoints in it. Because in the development environment, the service is going to have a different endpoint. In the production environment, the service is going to have a different endpoint. Tooling is also designed looking at this use case. So it's not a platform to play around with. It's the AppDev platform is well thought and designed for developers by developers. So there's, we know there's continuous integration systems running. So any artifacts that you write for WSO2 servers can be tested on continuous integration system. We have Maven deploy a plugin for that purpose. Okay, so App Cloud. App Cloud is just three days old. And uh, you can upload WAR files, microservices, web apps, uh, when I said WAR file, when I said WAR files, it meant JAXRS, JAXWS services to App Cloud and test it. So Randy in this situation can test his whole application on App Cloud just by writing some mock data generation services. So real real time distribution management system goes live. Now Randy gets a request to design a. Uh, Analytics solution for this. Analytics is an integral part of application. Why? Because data is most important these days. And people, these businesses make decisions on data. There are two types of data analytics. One is app analytics, and the other one is business analytics. When it comes to application analytics, 
It means how many requests came into the application, how many responses we did, how many error, m m errors occurred, how much did we take, uh, how many minutes did we take to respond, response times. So these for analyzing app technical data about the application, we provide you an app analytics dashboard in this form. So my MSF4J has it, uh, App Server has it, so ESP has it, not the same dashboard, different dashboards. The other important part, which is important to businesses are business analytics. If you're writing an application for business analytics, business, that application needs to provide important business insights that will help them to make business decisions. So this is opposed to traditional business uh, de decision making where it, be, it, it was mostly done based on models. Right now business decisions are made on data, doing statistical analytics on data. So WSO2 has a plat as app development platform provide analytics platform along with it to make business decisions. So in this situation, uh, they can make uh, business decisions like, okay, what are the product consumption patterns? What are the, what is the consumer, consumer distribution? What is the producer distribution? Is it worth setting up another center in central province? Uh, what is the wastage? Can we predict usage? If I am capable as quick distro, for predicting the usage, I can give an API for producers and charge for it. Each time they ask how much, okay, how much cupcakes do I need to bake for next two, e two weeks, it will give you the results, right? So that's one classification of analytics. The other classification of analytics falls into this category. It's based on time. One is batch analytics, real-time analytics, predictive analytics and interactive analytics. Batch analytics is when you analyze data over a long period. Other real-time analytics is for fraud, fraud detection. So predictive analytics for predicting the usage type of a scenario. So WSO2 DAS provides you all of these four types of analytics. So if you are to come up with a, a very awesome dashboard like Manu did in the previous session with data, you can use WS2 Dash underneath and come up with it. So Randy publishes data to Dash from all of these different systems, not these systems, from ERP, from distribution management system to Dash, which uh, analyzes data. For batch analytics, it uses Apache Sparks. For uh, real-time analytics, it uses Apache Siddhi. For predictive analytics, there's machine learner. Uh, it's not integrated yet, but it, you can install it separately. So you can, in, if there are applications with analytics needs, you can use DAS. So he comes up with this beautiful dashboard for his application, right? So his problems are solved. So as a summary, this is what I have to say. If you are going to have industry-grade APIs, if your app needs industry-grade APIs, use WSO2 API Manager. It supports all four grant types. If you want web apps and services, you can use MSF4J or WSO2 App Server. If you want enterprise security, you need WSO2 Identity Server. If you want integrations in your application, use ESB or BPS. BPS is for long running application. If you want to write mobile apps in a managed set of devices, manage those devices using WSO2 EMM. Uh, we are working on mobile app development platform. It will be out soon. So if you want analytics for your application, use WSO2 DAS. Those are the app features offered by WSO2 platform. Mm -hmm.